part two of our series called Take Back Your Life. And hopefully you were with us last week. We'll be catching up a little bit to get to part two. But before I jump into the message, uh, normally I like to start with a joke or something funny. But at this point, I think that it would be impossible not to address the elephant in the room. And um, you guys can see, you know, the elephant is on the psychiatry table and says sometimes, even if I stand in the middle of the room, no one acknowledges me. Well, if there's anybody who's ever going to acknowledge an elephant in the room, it's so somebody has to bring it up. It might as well be me. And we know what the elephant in the room is, right? So last week, if you were with us, uh, we played this wonderful game. It was called Family Feud. Maybe you've heard of Family Feud. But when we were playing Family Feud, we went through what are the top four answers for what is the one thing we should leave behind in 2020. And the top four answers were as follows. As a matter of fact, because of the crazy things that have happened during this week, I don't even know if I can say all of these words out loud without getting banned from social media. So I'm going to leave these words just on the screen. You can read them by yourself. But anyway, our hope and our prayer as we went through last week is that these things would be subtracted. But I, so our hope was that in 2021, it would, be, it would be minus COVID, minus lockdowns, minus politics, and minus everything that was so wrong in 2020. But it seems like math class is um, going the wrong way after the last week that we've lived through in 2021. It seems like all of those things, instead of being subtracted, it seems like they have multiplied. Um, and, and I don't know about you, but I, I just have one question is, did someone hit multiply to make all of these things um, kind of seem like they're going to get worse in 2021 instead of better. Well, one thing I know for sure that will will make us feel like things are being multiplied is if we spend too much time looking at these guys instead of spending our time in prayer, spending our time with God, spending our time with godly people. Um, actually, this week has actually reminded me of, there was a phrase that my mom used to say. Uh, it usually revolved around gossip and things that people were talking about. Uh, but she said, well, actually, my mom said she was quoting my grandfather, if I believe right. But she, she said, my dad used to always say, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. And I think that might be true now. And I could go into a long uh, spiel about how I feel and what I think's going on and all of those things. But um, number one, I don't know if I can talk about those things and not get uh, Florence Church's Facebook page banned. We're, we don't want to do that. But number two, God has spoke to me, I don't know, a few months back, and he said my number one job was described here in this. Uh, it was after Jesus was resurrected and Jesus comes to Peter and Peter's feeling really bad about himself because he had denied the Lord three times and he thought there's no way that God is ever going to be able to love me. I'm never going to be accepted by the Father, much less by Jesus. I, I don't even know if I can face him again. And Jesus comes and he has a meal with all the disciples and then he breaks apart Peter off by himself. And after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. So God has put, as far as my, uh, what he wants me to talk about mostly here at Florence Church has been those three words, feed my lambs. And here's what I know is that you guys go through an entire week of being bombarded with information, uh, good, bad, indifferent, ugly. I, I don't know which side of the pendulum you may be on. Um, I think most of you know which side I am on, but I mostly don't want to talk about that stuff today because here is what I feel. I, I feel like Life is really hard, and I, and I believe that um, most 
everyone right now feels like this tank that seems like it's draining down toward empty. And, and God wants to give us something that's going to fill us back up. God wants to give us something so that we can learn to take, so that you can learn to take back your life. And last week we, 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 uh, we talked about this simple concept and we pulled from a scripture, but our main message for how to take back your life, the first thing you have to do is you have to realize that it's your responsibility and no one else's responsibility to keep this man, to keep this man, to keep your soul, to keep your soul healthy. I did work on some graphics this week that are a little bit better than bad art with Pastor John. So here's the graphic for what keep this man looks like. And what we talked about last week is when we're talking about man, obviously we're not talking about man as male, but man as humanity, male, female, child, adult, whatever. But man is three things. Man is body, soul, and spirit. Um, it says in the book of Genesis, right at the beginning, that when God created man, he formed him from the dust of the earth and he breathed the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. So how do we define those? Really simply, the body is everything to do with the flesh. It can be health, wealth, food, drink, anything that's from the outside in. And soul is what is on the inside of you, but not the most inner part. The most inner part of you is your spirit man. That is that breath of life from God. That's that God consciousness that you have, that eternal you that can never die, that eternal you that is the, is the life force that God put inside of you. And your soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. And for the first half of this series, Take Back Your Life, we are going to concentrate on this soul man. Maybe we can sing, I'm a soul man. I don't know. Maybe it comes off. Maybe it don't. I think it was funny. Do you want to sing it with me? I'm a soul man. And, that, and that's the truth. We are all soul men. We are, we are soul beings. The, the real you, the real soul is your mind, your will and emotions. That is what, that's why I changed what you look like from this 2D object to this 3D object because you are animated. You are alive because your soul is alive. That is what um, people perceive in us. And that is who God is talking about when he said, keep this man. And if you weren't with us last week, we pulled that from this verse from 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 39. There was a prophet who came to a king and said, sir, I was in the thick of battle and suddenly a man brought me a prisoner and he said, guard this man. If for any reason he gets away, you will either die or pay a fine of 75 pounds of silver, which we talked about last week is $500,000 in today's money. And there's no way a soldier could ever pay that. If you know anybody in the military who has an extra 500 grand to drop, I, I don't think um, they would probably be in the military. Um, and the next verse says, but while I was busy doing something else, the prisoner disappeared. And this was defined as last week we realized that this prisoner that we've all been put in charge of by God is indeed ourselves. And the first step we went over last week is we can, you cannot take back your life if you're living for the approval and pleasure of other people. One day we're all going to stand before God and we're not going to be able to lay blame on him or her or they or them. We're not going to be able to give. It's just going to be us and God. And I want every one of us to stand before God and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So as we're kicking off this year, this year is still new. I want to be able to take back our lives. And the thing that we realized last week is we can't lay blame on other people. And this week, we're going to learn that you cannot lay blame on your circumstances. And the main takeaway for this week 
is going to be, you cannot take back your life if your living depends on outward circumstances. I know the times that we're living in, the times that we've lived through in 2020, I mean, they're unprecedented in our lifetimes. We've gone through um, just a steady push of worry, fear, doubt, um, um, not knowing what's going to happen next, not knowing what our country is going to look like in the near future, not knowing, heck, we don't even know who the leader of our country was going to be. And I'd be lying to you if I, if I said I knew all the answers and I know how everything's going to turn out. Um, I, have my, I, I have my beliefs. I have my faith. I believe that I do know that it may not turn out according to how we've planned. I know that it hasn't turned out according to how any of us have planned, but it will turn out for our good. And that promise doesn't come from our circumstances. That promise comes from God's word. Because Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know this, that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. But when, when I think about how our life can't be tied, our if we want to take back our life, how it can't be tied to circumstances, I think of the Apostle Paul. You know, the Apostle Paul went through more than we could ever imagine for the sake of the gospel of Christ. And God used the Apostle Paul in mighty and incredible ways, but it happened at great sacrifice. And rather than tell you everything that the Apostle Paul went through for the sake of Christ, I want to just read you Paul's testimony. This is what Paul says happened to him and. We're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at the 24th verse. We're just going to read a few verses. It says, Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Now, the Apostle Paul isn't talking about, you know, the kind of stone from the 1960s. It's a different kind of stone. I don't know that they still use that word. They did in the 80s, but I, I don't know. When he says stone, he means literally people picking up rocks and hitting him with rocks until he was left for dead. Let's read on. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have spent adrift on the sea. Many times on journeys exposed to danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own countrymen, danger from the Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger on the sea, danger among those posing as believers. Everywhere Paul was, he was always in constant turmoil. His circumstances were always under attack in labor and hardships, often unable to sleep, in hunger and thirst, often driven to fasting for lack of food, in cold and exposure without adequate clothing. I think if anybody could say to us that you cannot take back your life if your living depends on outward circumstances, it's the Apostle Paul. And here's what the Apostle Paul says of everything that he went through. And this is from the book of Philippians. And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. Can you imagine everything that the Apostle Paul went through? Everything on that list? And here he is, and he's saying as this part of his testimony that I want you to know that what has happened here has helped to spread the good news of God. I want you to know that everyone here knows 
that I'm here because of Christ, that the cause of Christ is being furthered because I'm here in this prison right now, writing you this letter. And in fact, the cause of Christ has been furthered for the last almost 2000 years as believers have been influenced by these letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison. But the truth is that Paul knew a secret that we need to learn. And we're going to go deeper into this over the next week. And probably it will take me two weeks to cover. But if our soul gets its source of energy from the body, from the flesh, then we as a person will decrease as the circumstances get worse and worse. But if we as a person, the animated self that we are, the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, if we derive our, our, our life force, if we, derive our, our, if we derive our true self from the spirit, that, that spirit that God placed within you, that he breathed new life in when you put your faith in Christ, then you'll realize that no matter what circumstances you're going through, that no matter who is the leader of our country, no matter if I can't say the word P-R-E-S, ident, without worrying about being censored by social media, no matter what's going on, we know that God is in charge. That God is in control and that God is working all things for our good. So I don't listen to what the news has to say. I listen to what God has to say. And here is what I believe God is wanting to say to each and every one of us is, what are you going to do with what you've been given? What are you going to do with what you've been given? Now, we don't know what that looks like in the next days and weeks and months ahead. We don't know exactly the hand we're going to be dealt. We don't know exactly what we're going to be given. But what we do know is that God is with us. And God is our source of life, not our circumstances. And because of that, we will be able to say in any circumstance just like the Apostle Paul did later on in that first chapter of Philippians, he said, for me to live is Christ. He is my source of joy, my reason to live, and to die is gain, for I will be with him in eternity. Amen. So to make sure that we understand that no matter what happens, it is well with our soul. We're going to let it be well with our soul. We're not going to let what happens in our circumstances control our mind, our will, and our emotions. We are going to surrender those to Christ so that he would be glorified in everything. And that is how you take back your life. Other people don't control it. Other circumstances don't control it. We are a God-minded people controlled by the spirit of Christ in in you. God bless you. Let's close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We we pray for our nation. We pray that, Lord, you know we are still one nation under God. That you have, you are the one who founded this country. You are the one who sustains this country. And Lord, we ask that you would have your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. I ask that you bless and keep and protect and guide every single person who is watching this. I ask that you do the same for their friends and for their family, God. But most of all, I pray that you would help us to get our hearts right, that you would help us to learn to keep this man, that we would learn that no matter what happens in this life, you will never let go of us. We are yours. And in your name we pray.
Thanks so much for joining us. If you'd like to contribute financially to the Florence Church, please visit thefloricechurch.com and click on the tab that says giving. God bless you. We'll see you soon.